So let's take a look at long-term memory. Now, as I'm sure you recall a couple of classes ago, I don't remember if it was the last class or the class before, I mentioned that when it comes to long-term memory, it's extremely large. And we actually don't know what the capacity is. So even though you'll read some very interesting articles where they're trying to model the mind, and model the brain, where they're trying to try to come up with a number, there's no way to validate that because we really don't know. And it's important to understand that as well as the other aspects of long-term memory when it comes to design. So who knows what recognition versus recall is? You're seeing it like like a multiple choice. You recognize right. the answers. Recall is like you actually have to think about it. There's something that triggers the memory, and but you have to think about it. Right. So with recognition, it's like a multiple choice question where you have to you know look to see which is the correct answer. You have just have to recognize it. With recall, you actually need to pull those details from your long-term memory yourself. So things such as an open-ended question on an exam. Do you think there's a difference in terms of how easy or difficult it is to remember information based on whether you have to deal with recognition or recall? There is. A lot of times people really believe that recognition is a lot easier. If you look at a lot of basic studies, you find that's true. Of course, if you look at um, some more complex studies where you look at for example, multiple choice questions where the responses are very similar, but there's only one correct response, then it actually makes it harder. But in general, when it comes to designing interfaces, we really want to keep in mind that for that particular domain, recognition tends to be easier. Now, why is that? Well, our long-term memory, a lot of times we think of long-term memory as just being this photograph that we take of our surroundings. And I think I've already mentioned that that's actually not the case. Right? Our long-term memory is actually very error-prone. It is very easy for us to make mistakes because it's a complex process to try to remember something and then, or excuse me, to try to take in information and then to try to pull that information out, encoding and decoding that information. So with our long-term memory, we tend to lose a lot of the details. We tend to remember larger events. So does anyone remember what I was wearing on Thursday? It was a dress. I actually don't remember what I was wearing on Thursday. Was it purple? It could have been. Could have been black or gray. I don't know. I don't remember. Now, if I told you and I said, actually, it was purple and black, and then I ask you tomorrow, what color was my dress on Thursday? What do you think you're going to say? It was purple and black. I remember that. What you may not remember is that I actually told you. Now, it sounds silly, right? But if you actually look at some of the research in psychology, particularly when it comes to eyewitness testimony, you will find not only how error-prone our long-term memory is, but how susceptible it is to being retroactively alterable. Now, what does that mean? It means that it can be influenced and changed by feedback from others and our own experiences. Because it is error-prone. We don't take in a lot of these details. Now, here's another thing that also can make it Retroactively alterable, also in terms of how we initially interpret it. It can also be weighted by emotion. Emotion, so if you have a strong emotion, you are more likely to remember things. But that emotion is also, if it's very strong, more likely to potentially interfere with how you encode that information. Now, I know none of you have ever been arrested or had to deal with the police in any way, so it may be a speeding ticket. But you know how you look on the news or you look on these TV shows, and when something happens, they take the witnesses and they always separate the witnesses, and they interview them separately to see what they say. Why do you think that is? They don't alter each other's uh, 
So they don't alter each other's memory on it. Because in fact, we will do it without even realizing it. Oh wait, Jose over there said that the car was black. I thought it was brown. Oh, it must be black because he seems like he's really sure. I may not be that sure, but so, it, it, oh yeah, it was black. Now here's the interesting part. How sure you are of the information when you're an eyewitness has no correlation with how correct you are. So you may not feel as sure and you may be the one who's correct. Also, if you're ever on a jury, remember that. You have eyewitness testimony. But that's why the police will separate people. Here's the thing you need to remember when it comes to applying this to design. If you design a system and it works beautifully except for one component that is so major and so irritating to users, what do you think they're going to remember? That's what they're going to remember. All right, so have I mentioned Clippy in this class yet? Clippy. The paper clip. The helpful paper clip. Does, have, did any of you experience Clippy? Yeah. Okay, some of you. Now you know who I'm talking about, right? Clippy, the help for paper clip and what was it Microsoft Word? Yeah, no. I can't remember if they were in Excel or any of the other ones. Yeah, how annoying was that? <laughs> well, you know, it was cute for about three seconds for me. Some people think that it was cute until it starts annoying you. I'm typing my letter. I see you're typing a letter. Do you need help? No. Three minutes later, I see you're typing a letter. Do you need help? No. Click. Now, when Clippy was around, do you remember anything else about some of the new features of Microsoft Word at that time? No. I don't. So what do we think of that version? It was annoying. Boy, it just really sucked. Right? That's, what, that's the reaction that we tend to get. Now, in reality, if you look at it objectively and you look at all the capabilities of Microsoft Word at the time, you take Clippy out, did it really suck? No, I would argue it didn't. But what sticks out in our long-term memory? Clippy. Remember Clippy when you're designing. So. That's an example of how our long-term memory can affect what we think of a product. So let's look a little more closely at an interface and some more design implications. So when we're looking at long-term memory, we want to remember all those aspects that we just talked about. Remember one of those aspects is recognition versus recall. So, when we're designing an interface, we want to remember that recognition is easier in general. So our main consideration should be that people need tools to augment or help their memory. It makes things easier for them. Now, where is this the biggest issue when it comes to being able to deal with a system? Well, many people would argue when it comes to security and authentication. And in fact, many will argue that, oh God, security and authentication, that is like one of the worst things that we're at when it comes to, to information technology. Now, what are some problems with the way the industry as a whole handles security and authentication? What do you think? Well, according to the example, I mean, that's pretty common. You can put a security question, you can put maybe an authentic email address or something like that. Does it make you feel probably Right, so it may be that there's a whole bunch of steps. Uh, what site can ask for like a username and password, and then they'll say it's wrong, but it doesn't tell you what's wrong. So you can't really figure out which is wrong, and you can't ask for help people. You don't know which is wrong. Right, so you don't get any feedback, right? You don't get, you know, or get a feedback that's really helpful if you are, you know, if you get something wrong when you're trying to log in someplace. Yes. Um, it's based on a and they can't remember the life of them yet. Then do, 
the right, so you have to deal with long-term memory. So actually, your question is a great example. When they ask you a security question like, okay, you know, what is the name of your favorite pet? Well, I've had that question, and I come back a month later, and I'm like, which pet did I put down? Because I have lots of favorites. Was it my childhood favorite? Was it one of my two favorites now to decide to focus on the cats or on the horse or on the bird? I don't remember. All right, so we're not very good at this. Now, there's also the 10 bazillion passwords that they tell us to remember, right? Right, they're all supposed to be different. Now, how many people do you think really have 10 bazillion different passwords? Okay, one person in the entire class, I can tell you I don't. Oh, wait, don't try to hack my stuff. Should I tell you that? All right, so we're supposed to have, for every account, we're supposed to have a different password. How reasonable is it? It's not reasonable. People aren't going to remember that. All right, so then people tend to keep the same password or a couple of passwords. Or they write them all down and stick them in their desk. Now, that also leads us to another issue. We have all of these requirements, right? What are some of the requirements? Capital. It has to have a capital. Number. It has to have a number. Eight characters long. Yeah it, has to, yeah, it has to have a symbol. It has to be at least eight characters long. Something that you change it every certain amount of days. Right. You have to change it every month or every two months. Oh, because you forget your password, like have your socks, you forget it, so you can't use the same one. Oh, yeah. And you didn't actually know which one it was, so when you try it, you're yeah. like, oh, now I'm going to Right. You can't use the last 10 passwords. But you don't remember what your password was, so how many times are you typing it in? Yeah, and so you're like, oh, does that, how smart is that when it comes to our long-term memory? Not so much. Now, how many of you have worked in an office environment where you have really, really strict password requirements? Okay, a couple of you. So you're in an office environment, you have very strict password requirements. What's the first thing you see when you walk in and you look at someone's monitor? Yeah, it's like a yellow sticky or something with a password written on it. <laughs> right? Very, very common. How secure is that? Zero. Yeah, zero. It's even worse than just putting a regular password. It actually is worse than putting a regular password because now I can just walk into anybody's office, type in uh, their username and password because we always know each other's you know, usernames, right? It's usually the same as our email. Type in the password and I can do anything. I don't like this person, I'm going to get them in trouble. But it's also because people do that, they tend to do that because um, usually the password that they have, it's randomly generated. So sometimes it's not even generated by them. So it could be like X, 1, Z, like a bunch of different characters that it doesn't actually make any sense. That's true. Sometimes they are randomly generated. Yeah, so now companies are using, um, like for example, healthcare companies, um, they're using other authenticators that it rent, like it generates a number. Yeah, it gives you a, a, it randomizes the password. Yeah, it randomizes the password so not to like see it. And they give you a little thing that randomizes the password and you see it and type it. And different every time you go into it. They're called RSA keys. It's like a little key fob, and then every 15 seconds it changes the string of numbers. Right. Yeah. Then... Interesting. Wow, that doesn't sound fun. <coughs> So do, do you find that people are having difficulty with that? No, it's a lot better. No. So, oh, it's a lot better? It's an extra step, but it's better. Oh, OK, so it's an extra step. So it's not maybe not as efficient, but it's more secure and easier? It's yeah. visible. Yes, and it's visible. All right, actually, that's a great example, because what are you doing there? You're balancing out <laughs> your requirements. You're making it safer, even if it's not as efficient. So that's a great example. Thank you. So with security, of course, this is just an example. You know, we've talked about a lot of these things. Now, some of these, we've talked about the ambiguity. Now, what about the examples where they let you create your own question? What do you think of that? A lot of you are shaking your head. It's convenient, I guess, but I mean, you usually tend to forget the answer as well. Yeah, it's convenient, but is it, are you any better at remembering that answer? Actually, you find you're actually not much better at remembering that answer either. So one of the problems with security is where do you find that balance? It does have a lot of long-term memory implications. 
Yes. Maybe just one more example regarding these questions. Um, when I was working at this place, um, they were deploying this PGP encryption software, which pretty much encrypt your hard disk, whatever. So you had to create a couple of security questions. But security questions were like really ridiculous. They were like, what's the first person that you dance with? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Or something like that. It was really specific. Or what like was uh, the first time that you kissed somebody or something? I don't know. Things like that. They're really specific to a date or time. Yeah, so, yeah first feature. Yeah. Oh, wow. and there were other ones that was like, uh, for example, who was your um, um, your father's best friend when you were a kid? Or, you know, who was your father's best friend when you were a kid? <laughs> wow. Well, you know, they were probably trying to get rid of the ambiguity. Like 50, questions. 50 questions? Oh, my God. Wow. I'm glad I don't work for them. So in that case, they're trying to be more specific so you get rid of some of the ambiguity. But good Lord, who knows those answers? I don't know who the first person was that I danced with. I remember even the first time I danced. All right, so again, you have to be really careful. You may be trying to compensate for something and then cause another problem. Happens a lot in security.